I am reading from the fifth chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. I'll use verse 36. And soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, but only believe. You that are listening to the broadcast and you that are under this tent tonight, I want to try to correlate these two outstanding miracles in the life of Jesus Christ. And I believe that there has been division in the church world today. When a faith preacher begins to preach the word of God, some preachers declare that he's preaching too much on the human responsibility of the individual and not enough of the divine sovereignty of God. But I believe that we can correlate the two. You have to have them both. And in this particular chapter, we have the divine sovereignty of God demonstrated, where the recipient has nothing to do about the miracle. And on the other hand, we have Jesus having nothing to do about the miracle, and the woman, because of her faith, receives one of the greatest miracles that's ever recorded in the Scripture. And I believe that God desires for every one of us to taste of his miracle working power whether it's for healing or salvation you cannot separate the two and I know when you come to Jesus Christ let me tell you right off the bat that you have nothing to do with your new birth God has done it all it's already been accomplished Somebody says, what do I have to do? You don't have to do anything. The price has already been paid. Jesus paid the price on Calvary 2,000 years ago when he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Can you raise your hands and shout amen? Now this is the very beginning of St. Mark's Gospel and Jesus has just been anointed by God when the Holy Ghost came upon him. He received power and now he is going forth and he's demonstrating this power that was invested in him through the power of the Holy Ghost. He opened blind eyes, he unstopped deaf ears and now in this chapter he is facing head on demon spirits. He's coming in contact with the underworld and with his authority and with his power he commands the devil to come out and every demon spirit is subject to the commands of Jesus Christ because of the anointing of God that was on him and I want to encourage every one of you believers that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost God hath clothed you with the same anointing that Jesus had on him Jesus never attributed those miracles to himself he said my power didn't heal you but he came into the synagogue and he stood up at the rostrum and he said the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he went on to tell him what that anointing was for and I come to town to tell you you have the same anointing that Jesus had to destroy the works of the devil and bring deliverance to people that are held captive so we'll get in to this second miracle. Before this second miracle is recorded, Jairus approaches him. He is one of the rulers of the synagogue. His daughter is at the point of death. This is an emergency cry. And I want you to know that God's ear is always open to our cry when there's an emergency. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you have a name that you can call on? Every one of us knows what those emergencies are. Sometimes you can't get to the pastor. Sometimes he's gone. Sometimes you can't get to the evangelist. Nobody. You can't even dial a phone. But thank God you've got a name that you can call on. You don't have time to say Father in the name of Jesus. But all you have time to do is holler his name out. Jesus. And it's an emergency. God comes and answers your cry and he'll set you free. Now here's a man, the ruler of the synagogue who comes because his daughter is at the point of death. And Jesus takes time out. This thrills me. 
that Jesus would go home with him. And while he was on his way home to meet the need of this ruler of the synagogue, all of a sudden the crowd pressed in against him and a little woman pressed through that crowd and touched the hem of his garment. Somebody told this woman about Jesus. A certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians, spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather she grew worse when she had heard of Jesus. There's the key. Somebody told her about Jesus. You have people living in your community and in your complex. You have people on the job. No matter where you are, they are getting worse. They're looking for somebody that has a word for them. I want you to know the world is looking for help. And you hold the answer in your own hand. Jesus Christ is the answer. All you have to do is tell them about Jesus. Somebody told this woman about Jesus. He said, if you can just get him to put his hand on you, you will be healed. And her faith was so high, she said, he won't have to lay his hands on me. Just let me get close enough to where he is and let me just touch the hem of his garment and I know that I will be made whole. Here's a woman that spent her entire living on doctor bills and getting worse by the day. There's no hope. And she pressed through a crowd and touched the hem of his garment. Jesus himself was unaware of the need of this woman. And when she touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stopped in the crowd and he said, Who touched me? And the disciples around him said, Master, they all got their hands on you. He said, I know it. But somebody touched me with faith. Oh, hallelujah. This is the human responsibility. Somebody touched me with faith. He said, I felt the virtue go out of me. And the preachers know what I'm talking about. When you're praying for somebody, you can feel the virtue going out of you. Especially with a demon-possessed person or somebody dying with a cancer. And when you lay your hands on them, you can feel the virtue just going out of you. That's the anointing. That is the power. That is the Holy Ghost. The same, Jesus, the same thing that Jesus had in him goes into that other body when you minister to them. But here's a woman, her faith was, if I could just touch but the hem of his garment I know that I'll be made whole and she drew something out of him and the Bible says she felt in her body that she was healed of her plague now some of you ain't gonna like this but when you get healed you're gonna feel it don't take all my feeling from me I know I preach like this a lot of times take it by faith but I want you to know there's feeling to this faith you can feel that resurrection power coming into your blood into your bone structure into the marrow of your bone it's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that causes life to come alive and you are the recipient of his healing power and by his stripes you are healed I had the tent up in California some years ago and we were late getting started they were putting the platform in we had some problems and a little lady we generally had a first service in the afternoon but we couldn't have it giving out prayer cards she was a little Baptist lady she said oh brother she didn't know who I was she said I was walking around the back and she says could I talk to your brother for a minute she said is there no service today I said no ma'am they're too busy getting the tent up I said uh, we were a little late getting started she says but I came the whole way from San Francisco with my daughter I saw this on television I heard it on radio it says that Jesus is the healer my little baby was born with crossed eyes and I knew she said I knew if I could just get that girl under the tent that God would heal her. That was her faith. She didn't say if a man of God would lay hands on me. She said, if I could just get her under the tent. 
And I looked at her and I said, where's your daughter at? She said, well, she's right here. And I got down on my knees and looked into her eyes and I, to- I saw two straight eyes. I said, are you sure this is your daughter? She said, well, I ought to know my own daughter. I said, you told me her eyes were crossed. Look at him again. And when she did, that Baptist took off and ran around that tent shouting. I've never seen anybody shout like that in all my life. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody anointed her with oil. Nobody put a prayer cloth on her. But it was a woman's faith. God takes you at your word. If I could just get this baby under the tent, I know God would heal her. And I believe the moment she came under that tent, the power of God came into those eyes and straightened it up because he honored that girl's faith. Can you raise your hands and shout praise the Lord with me somebody?